الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين شفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا ابي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم being the Friday of Easter and also we witnessed the occasion of the birth of the beloved Imam Mahdi Salamullah alayhima. I thought it pertinent to talk about these two great people and the roles that they are supposed to perform in accordance with our spiritual and religious literature. Now Isa Salamullah alayhi is possibly the most revered prophet within the Quran and I say this uh, with and, and I'm open for correction in the sense that we find a form of direct speech between Isa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we find Allah saying to Isa inni mutawaffika wa rafi'uka Isa I will cause you to encounter tawaffa which is the death of ce- state of cessation post death and I will lift you to myself again we find in the Quran Isa directly speaking with God and saying O Lord send us a banquet from the heavens so that it may be a day of festivity for us God responds directly to Isa I shall indeed do that but then those who disbelieve will suffer will face or suffer a severe chastisement. This is a direct speech of God. And again on the day of Qiyamah, Isa personally is addressed by God. Now you don't find that sort of proximity between God and a prophet displayed in terms of any other prophet in this particular way. So Isa Salamullah is celebrated within the Quran and undeniably Isa is that point where we can easily make a slip in devotion and love to him. But this Isa Salamullah came as a part of education for mankind. Like every other noble prophet before him and the blessed prophet of Islam after him. The whole intention of God was for humanity to graduate through these spiritual and virtuous teachings that these great men were imparting. The aim was never for us to be Isa-centric or to devote ourselves to Isa, but rather learn through Isa how to approach our parent, God himself. Isa Salamullah was merely an instructor. The whole aim of God was for humanity to graduate. Now if God has created such a feeble creation known as humanity that he constantly needs to send saviors who can bear the burdens of the sins of humanity then God is undoubtedly a failure in the way he has created. On the one hand he has created Adam as a steward endowed him with utmost knowledge and then to constantly send prophets to save mankind because otherwise they are going towards hell and if somebody does not believe in one of these prophets then they are condemned does not make sense for whereas the prophets were devoted to God himself why should humanity be expected to devote themselves to the prophets it doesn't make any sense so here Isa is a role model for us to find our belonging with God. There is no centricity with Isa. Centricity is with God himself. And God makes that quite clear in the Quran. Isa, did you say to them, worship me and my mother as opposed to God or in addition with God or other than God? Isa says, oh God, I have not said any such thing. In fact, when I went to them, I said, inni Abdullah, 
I am a servant or a slave of God and no more. And God himself has ordained that I establish the salah, the connection of devotion with you. I am devoted to you. How can anybody be devoted to me by my command? Isa himself expresses the impossibility of such a suggestion to God. Not that God does not know. Isa said, you know what is in my soul. I do not know what is in your soul. You know better what the response to what you are asking. So although Isa would sacrifice himself countless times over for the betterment of humanity, Isa Salamullah is not the point of salvation. The point of salvation is humanity coming to the fruition of its own potential. And how can God's nature be other than the nature that it is vested us with or breathed into us? We take children from primary education or nursery education all the way to graduation at every stage. The children and the young adults are in need of instructors until they come to a ripened state of maturity where they no longer require intervention by any instructor. And that is the glorious state where we want to take the student. How can God's nature be any different? He has endowed us with his own nature and our nature is a yardstick by which we understand God's nature. Allah says in the Quran, it is the fitra of Allah through which he has fashioned his creation and you will not find any difference in the ways of God. So Isa salamullah alayhi is a role model. There is a big difference between seeing, saying that he is a role model or, and by saying that he is the point of salvation. It is a bit of a defeatist statement to say that you will not find salvation save through Isa as our Christian brothers maintain this exclusivist attitude of theirs and I'm sure if they were to think through it they will be able to come to a better understanding. However, the Jewish community has the same notion of exclusivism that we are the right ones. Only by our method will you find salvation. Now then when we look at the Muslims we find no difference whatsoever. The people who believe in Mahdi, which is the Muslim community, a huge portion of it believes that Mahdi is going to come and save them. And salvation is only through Mahdi. If we look at it this way, every faith tradition espouses the same beliefs. They say there is one God. He is a virtuous, noble God. He has, through his grace, sent chosen people to direct us to him. They all say, saviors will come towards the end of time. Maintaining all of this, which brings them all on an equal footing, then they say, no, ours is the only right one. They have skewed it up in a very big way. First and foremost, they become exclusivists through a claim that is universal for humanity. And second is that they are very bleak. They have no confidence in their own humanity or ability, and they do not have any confidence in humanity at large, and they lack total confidence in the creational work of God. And three, they give centricity to these noble figures, whereas these noble figures are like us on the path of discovering their God and devoted to God. Let us explain this a bit Further, if you look at the Muslim community and the way they understand Islam, when they talk of the Prophet, they find salvation only through the Prophet. There is no salvation other than through the Prophet. And then we have this tradition that every day after the demise of the Prophet will be worse than the day preceding it until humanity comes to a level which is unbearable when they lose hope in themselves and then a deliverer will come and deliver them. This is such a bleak outlook. And then we come to the Mahdi and look at how negative the literature is or the perception is of the Mahdi. That human beings will be worthy of no good. They will need a savior who will come and save them. This then imposes upon the minds a very 
pessimistic outlook towards the world and towards the future. Mahdi becomes the savior. The rest of humanity is not worth anything. We ourselves are incapable of bringing about any good. We are exclusivist and we are pessimistic. And both of these things are in sharp contrast with what the Quran has been preaching and previous scriptures have been preaching and what we witness of the human trend. Definitely humanity is far better today than it's ever been in its history. Think about it carefully. When has this sense of moral righteousness been so ripened within the folds of humanity? Today, we are imposing sanctions upon the Chinese for their ill treatment of the Uyghur, of the Xinjiang uh, province. China is in Asia, nothing to do with us. But our sense of righteousness and rights of others impel us to speak for those poor, downtrodden people. Today, we speak against the treatment of the Myanmar people by their government and the army. They are nothing to do with us. Whereas previously, we would have not spoken about the ill treatment of people of other faiths. Today, faith is not a barrier. This shows the ripened state of human morality. Today, we are talking about global poverty, injustices, oppression. Today, we are talking about the inalienable, inalienable human rights, that everybody deserves security, food, shelter, and education in addition. And these rights will continue. The discussion on rights will ripen even further as we become more and more refined. Humanity has never been in a better position than what it is at present. We are seeing that our natural human trend is a progressive one. We are not only growing intellectually, technologically, but morally and virtually, we, virtuously we are becoming more and more refined. Now contrast this with our religious outlook. We will find that they are totally out of sync. This just shows that we have misinterpreted our noble religious figures and our religious literature in a particular context where we found ourselves to be the oppressed. With the Christians it's easy. At the time when Isa was alleged to be crucified, the Christians were a minority, downtrodden group. The Muslims similarly, when the Prophet came, they had the same state. The Shias can claim at the time of the occultation of the Mahdi, they too were downtrodden and an oppressed sect. But those negative outlooks on positive literature have continued unchallenged. And we are seeing how detrimental they are. It is quite amazing that we want to give our children the best education. We want inter and intrafaith congregations. We are seeing our nature is one of promotion of growth. Yet our religious outlook is a bleak one. <coughs> we are acting inconsistently with our religious outlook and yet we are not challenging our religious outlook. In this way, if the faith traditions, be they directly Abrahamic or indirectly Abrahamic with the inclusion of the Hindu and the Buddhist and the Sikh traditions, if we can come back and re-examine our religious literature in line with the human progressive trend of growth, we will come out with a very positive notion of the end of times where we are supposed to progress and bring about a befitting world for the existence of humanity at large. And be prompted into action as opposed to being filled with this pessimism and negativity and contempt for humanity at large. For that is barring our growth as a religious community. <coughs> now look at what we have done. Have you ever examined the spiritual literature of the Shias, Dua Nudba? It is nothing but complaint. It is very negative, the mindset that it creates. I'm not talking about the content. The content might be accurate historically or in itself. But the Dua nonetheless is not authentic. 
in the sense that it has not come from the imams and we know this it has not come from the imams and no imam has said read this dua friday or any day religiously and then when you look at the content of this dua it imposes two things one a negative outlook to humanity two it rids us of confidence within our own capabilities and three it makes us imam centric all three of them are in sharp contradiction with what our human condition suggests and what the religious literature has been saying to us think about this carefully then dua iftita that we will read in ramadan the first part of his impeccable God centric to the core the second part is nothing but complaints now those complaints might have been valid in the minor occultation but keep on reading it for 30 days in the month of ramadan what will a young mind be indoctrinated with with this negativity what are these notions that everybody is our enemy and we are very few we are weak we are meek we can't do anything send our imam for us Think about this literature. It rids humanity of its confidence. It was a phenomenally productive notion. Mahdi will come and fill the earth with justice and peace. What does that suggest? That humanity is capable of bringing about peace and justice. That Mahdi will rule upon the people of Torah with their Torah, Injil with their Injil, Zabur with their Zabur, Quran with their Quran. What does this suggest? That humanity can withstand diversity and plurality and can come upon a common platform of peaceful coexistence in which reciprocally everybody is gaining. How inconsistent is our conception of Mahdi and Isa to what the Prophet Isa and Prophet Muhammad did? The Prophet Muhammad, when he went to Medina, there were Jews there, his embryonic community of Muslims, the pagans. He creates a charter for Medina in which all of them are equal citizens. I know citizenry is a modern concept, but in all of them are equal members of the community. Things that concern them equally, they will all face equally. And yet they are allowed to adhere to their tribal laws to resolve their conflicts. What a phenomenal government he set up. So the prophet is so broad, creating a phenomenally pluralistic and a diverse community. And Mahdi comes, cannot withstand plurality and kills everybody and imposes peace upon them. How can you impose peace on a community that does not understand the worth of peace and justice. Of course, it means that human community will be ripened enough to understand the notions of peace and justice. It's impelling growth. Look at how inconsistent this notion of Mahdism has become. And then these Yaras that we have there, you see, as opposed to being prompted into growth, what the religious preachers have done, they have turned Mahdism into a very bleak concept. One in which we think we are the victims and no good for anything. And we need somebody to come and deliver us. He is not going to come and deliver useless people. He is going to come to find intellectual, humanitarians. The Jewish community of Medina used to tell the pagans of Medina that this prophet has been promised he will come and we will predominate. As soon as the prophet came, they were the first ones to reject the prophet. I fear, same is the fate of the community who upholds the Mahdi in the same way that the Jewish community used to uphold the Prophet. They are saying, we will predominate, we are the downtrodden, we are the oppressed. They don't want to contribute in a meaningful way. When the Mahdi comes, the literature says, these will be the first ones to reject him. You know this. The religious literature says, the ulama will be the first ones to reject him. They will say, we still, we can do without you. Or they will say, you're changing the deen of your grandfather. This is the, what, what will happen. And in fact, this is exactly something that can happen. In any case, most of this literature is not authentic. Instead of being prompted into growth, the preachers have busied us with ceremonies that cannot be sourced accurately. And these ceremonies are so negative. وَقَتْلُ الْكَافِرِينَ بِسَيْفِكَ O Mahdi, this, hadith, this ziyarat is not authentic at all, yes? And in that ziyarat we are saying that the kafir will be killed with your sword. Now tell me something. The Prophet came. Did he come to the Muslims? He came to the kafir, to the worst of mushriks, right? What did he do? He made them into the best of humans. Do you really think his grandson, 
who is the culminating glory of his message, is going to just come, unleash his sword and kill everybody? The last thing upon on his mind will be to fight anybody. If we look at the literature, Mahdi and Isa, Salamullah Arihima, will be defending themselves against the Antichrist and Dajjal or whatever Sufyani or who will be transgressing upon people. Their job is not to come and fight and kill people. Their job is to come and culminate the human glory upon the face of this earth. Teach humanity to live in accordance with those godly principles that the books have been transmitting all along. You have one God. You are stewards upon the earth. There is no centricity to any prophet. That's what the Quran is saying. There is no centricity to any prophet. Where has Quran made the story of salvation contingent on the belief of any one prophet? It has made salvation contingent to belief in God, hereafter, and righteous deeds. Ahsanul Amala, Amalun Saleh, Khairat, Hasanat. These are the things the Quran is saying. It is quite amazing where humanity needs to be and where it is naturally going. Yet, the religious teachings, I'm talking about the preachers, not original religious teachings, is inconsistent with the human trend. The human trend is one of Mahdiism. It is going towards that end where it culminates fully in the human glory. So Mahdism, the coming of a savior, Isa, the Messiah, you will find majority of the religious cultures of this world, be they Abrahamic directly or indirectly, advocate the coming of such superior beings that will lead humanity to its glorious, complete state. But they all will admit that they will withstand plurality and diversity for there is a truth beyond the religious narrow truth that the preachers have been saying godliness and acquisition of a virtuous state that is what awaits us and we are naturally moving in that direction can we recite surah fatiha for all our marhumin and especially those that have died recently and for the cure of all those who are suffering al fatiha بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وآله الطيبين الطاهرين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Just a couple of points Mahdism stands for productivity It stands for self-belief It needs to be used to empower goodness when the notion of Mahdism is imparted within young minds at the level of madras education, they ought to be introduced to Mahdism as a glorious state awaiting them that they need to go out and achieve. That Mahdi is for the global humanity. You children have to contribute to the global humanity. Mahdi will come at a stage of technological advancements, you need to contribute towards that. Mahdi is going to come and establish justice. You need to fight for justice and talk against oppression. Since Mahdi is for humanity, justice belongs to humanity. Speak for justice wherever it is. Now I find this attitude of the Muslims that we will speak for Muslims, but we will not speak for non-Muslims. We will speak up for the plight of the Muslims, but we will not do the same for the plight of the non-Muslims. Justice knows no religion. It's a human condition and God expects us to establish it. 
And virtue cannot be confined to a group of people. Virtue is to give out goodness of God to one and all, for all are God's family and God's children. Madhism can be a platform for prompting growth, empowering people, inducing within them a worldview that can totally reform their minds and prompt them into activity and achieving and contributing at a human level. Similarly, if we look at the faith traditions, we believe in God. We believe in a virtuous God. We believe in God communicating through his virtuous servants. And we believe in a savior. Imagine Mahdism can be a platform for interfaith dialogue, which is a very meaningful one, not only a superficial one that we sit together and have tea and biscuit and feel good about each other. No, a very meaningful dialogue that look we believe in the same end. Let this prompt us into activity and for us to rid our biases against each other and rid our souls of discrimination. It can become a phenomenal platform to bring about human goodness. With that, I will ask the preachers to consider re-looking at the literature around Mahdi and recalibrating their understanding and looking at it in a positive way and two to understand that Islam is not Mahdi centric it is God centric to reject the inauthentic literature and to uphold only the authentic one and then to guide us and our communities Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد المصطفى وعلى علي المرتضى وعلى فاطمة الزهراء وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي وحجة الله بن الحسن القائم المهد المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله مخرجك وظهورك وجعلنا الله من أنسارك وعوانك والمستشهدين بين يديك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد